Hey Sophie, how you doing? I'm good, thanks, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm just admiring your Frankenstein poster in the background. Yeah, got all the universal posters in here, which is maybe a bit gloomy and sort of <laughs> intense for the middle of the day. But <laughs> it looks like he's watching and listening to what I'm saying. I should sit more like that. <laughs> Actually, it looks like he's like whispering in your ear, giving you advice. <laughs> yeah, he's my, he's my publicist, going, don't tell them that. <laughs> uh congrats continued congrats on peaky blinders thank you uh it's been moderately successful moderately successful so far which is which is always nice <laughs> <laughs> um are you still pinching yourself just the fact that how the show's taken off because even though it had so many amazing people actors filmmakers and everyone else in between you never quite know but to have a show that's now gone for six years and there's such a huge fan base for it are you guys still pinching yourself the fact that it's it's got to this point now? Yeah, massively. I don't think you you ever know if what you're making is going to be something, if people are going to take to it, if, it's, if the sort of alchemy is there for it to, to be what everyone's imagining. And it's an amazing thing. Peaky's has been an amazing journey, I think, you know, being a part of it. But even for everyone else just looking at the journey, it's quite an extraordinary thing, isn't it? It was this sort of small... I mean, not small but it was this show on BBC Two and it was a bit of a sleeper hit and now it's this massive thing and it's kind of generated its own iconography and everybody knows Peaky Blinders even if you haven't watched the show you know you could say what what Peaky Blinders looks like you know what does a Peaky Blinder look like and that's an amazing thing and I, I mean I had no idea it could be like this it was one of my first jobs and I was just grateful to not be working in a bar anymore. Blinders <laughs> <laughs> was very jammy. That was really lucky. Hey, if you're going to be lucky, this is the show to be lucky on, right? Right. Pretty good. Although it's, uh, also with the show, it's entered the zeitgeist so much in like the, the people wearing the hats and dressing up for like Halloween as Peaky Blinders people. It's that's that must be stranger than the success of the show you might you know if you walk out you go to the shops or something and you go oh my goodness these people are dressed like peaky blinders <laughs> yeah, that's crazy yeah because not even just you know you do you go to the supermarket and there's like peaky blinders sort of merchandise which is really strange but you're right like it's kind of in it, it kind of generated this like new way for men to dress that's what i love about it you know i think women get to explore fashion really free there's all different options for how you want to you know express yourself with with clothes but it's kind of limited for men and I feel like Peaky's really offered a style that that, that a lot of men have, have held on to this kind of smart cool aesthetic and that's an extraordinary thing you know when you see men with the granddad collars and the waistcoats and the pocket watches and the hats like it's, it's that's cool that's a, that's an amazing thing to come off the back of a tv show yeah, absolutely. And take take me back to the to when you auditioned for this. Was it six, seven, eight years ago, whatever it was? Now, what? How how much did you know about what was going on at the beginning? Were you given kind of was it? A, I can't imagine it was too much of a secret back then, like a like a, like it would be now for people coming on. You know, all these guests us and everything. So, what was the what was the how long was the process for you at the beginning and all that kind of stuff? Was, um, well, I mean, like I said, it was like one of the first jobs that I got. So I I got the. Um, I think they only had a couple of scripts. Subsequently, when we filmed every series, Steve would write all the scripts and you just, and that's such a pleasure, such a gift. You'd get all episodes before you started shooting anything, which is quite unusual. Normally you're kind of waiting for episodes to drip feed through. But in the in the first series, I, I kind of got these, I got the character breakdown and I think I got an episode, um, if that even, and I got a couple of sides, which is the scenes they want you to read with. And it's and I remember really, really vividly actually it said um Ada is the sister. Um the, the character note they would give you is that she's slightly feral. <laughs> I was like, I've never <laughs> seen that in a character breakdown for the kind of parts I was going up for. And I, I read the scene in the cinema where she says, you know, I'm a Shelby, put my fucking film back on. And so I did a tape, I, I taped for it, sent that off, and then they said, Oh, they'd like to see you again. And I went into the production office, I think, and sat in a small little corner of the office and read it with the director and just didn't think anything of it. And then they offered me the part. And I I think I'm so glad I didn't have any idea of what it was or what it was gonna become because I would have just gone to jelly. But as it was, I just thought, oh, this is a fun thing to do with my afternoon. And then, <laughs> then I'll go to the pub and whatever, you know, I'll probably never hear from them. And I got <laughs> the part and I mean, life-changing, it was great. 
are you considered i know oh, the kids all call it the og now are you still considered in terms of the old guard that you you allowed to know the secrets because i know that now it's at a point where that isn't maybe the case as what it was at the beginning what the secrets of what happens just generally yeah you like you said that you get all the scripts Do you, is that still are you still part of that that you're able to to have yeah that? and, and I, lo I love that they they do give you the script because I think it helps I, I think it's really frustrating when you're filming something and you're waiting to find out what happens in episode five and you might get a script through and go oh, god I've not been playing that at all whereas this is such a gift because you just get all the episodes you know what the story is you know where you're going to end up so you know where you need to start and that's that's lovely and there's no um hierarchy there I think if you're playing your part in Peaky's you get the scripts you get to be a part of the world I think now you have to sign 10 million NDA <laughs> make a blood oath that you won't tell anyone but <laughs> but yeah it's like yeah I'm an OG I'm gonna take that I'm an OG family member yeah you're part of the family aren't you yeah they were literally part of the family <laughs> <laughs> um so how have you enjoyed because obviously as an actor you very rarely get to revisit parts you know people will unless you're in a connected franchise or something like this or a show like this you very rarely get to do the same character and to see them evolve and change over many years how have you enjoyed that journey seeing Ada go from where she was at the beginning of season one into into season six and has it has it surprised you as to just where her her journey has gone yeah it's been an amazing thing it's um it's sort of, I sort of get a bit like embarrassed to go back, not embarrassed, but it's such a strange thing to go back and, and think about and look at series one, because I really was a kid. I didn't, you know, and I've grown and changed as Ada has. And I think Steve reflects that definitely. He kind of, he bounces off what he's seeing on the screen and what people are doing and how they're changing. Um, but it's, it's, it's an, um, I mean, what a gift to be able to sort of to, to stick with a character for this long and grow with them and l learn from them. I really, that sounds really wanky, but I really feel like I've learned from Ada and I've, I wish I was just a little bit more like her, you know, and I, and so that's kind of a nice thing to play a part that is really fun and you really enjoy being them and you kind of take a little of that. Usually you give something of yourself to a character and it's a really rare thing to take a little something of the character with you, you know, um, and to be, and to play a character that, you kind of grow and, and change as the world does. So with what everybody else is doing, that affects the world and and, and the story kind of grows that way and you, you just stay on board. It's an amazing thing. It's why I wanted to come back and, and do the final season and, and finish this journey that's been almost 10 years. Yeah. And you get to, I mean, you obviously, as you say, you get to kind of learn as you're going about your character, but also as you for you as, a, as an actor. And I can imagine being around, not just around Killian and... and Helen, may she rest in peace, and all the other people. But then you get to work with Sam Neill at the beginning, Annabella Wallace, and now you've had Anya Taylor Joy come in, and Oscar with Adrian Brody, and now Stephen Graham and Sam. Cla I mean, that must be an amazing bonus to the job that you get to then go and not just work with these people, but to learn from these people that have had such such long and and prosperous careers. Yeah, totally. And 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 anybody that comes on to the show brings this new energy which is really exciting and especially as the series have gone on and it's become a bigger thing people are really pleased to be there when you're shooting and that's so lovely because people aren't like when's this day can be over I'm on something else tomorrow people are thrilled to be in the peaky world you know but then when you get these people coming and playing this sort of guest roles that's an amazing thing I mean what a, what a privilege that they want to come and be a part of it and yeah and it's it's so much fun to watch how different people work and what they bring and how they see the world and how they see their character within it. So, I mean, we're so lucky. The, the roster of people that we've had involved is, is so classy and so cool. Yeah, you must have a, a, I don't know if you have this, but an imaginary bingo card in your head. Like when I do interviews, I always tick off people. You've had an amazing thing here. And then also in early in your career, you've been able to tick off George Clooney, both as an actor and as a director. And that must have, are you pinching yourself at that? The fact that you managed to, you've been able to go and work with someone of his of his caliber, because he is like yeah. top of I, the listen, top. I dine out on that story. Like, I <laughs> like, the ratio of how much time I actually spent with him to how many stories I tell about him is, is really disproportionate. <laughs> but that's an amazing thing, because you're like, that is someone that's, you know, that's a different league isn't it and it's yeah. an extraordinary thing to, to meet people like that and to yeah to have those, those experiences what a lucky person I can't wait to tell my grandkids all about that <laughs> <laughs> remember to tell him that he was Batman people forget yeah. that it's always like, yes granny we know and I'll be like I work with Batman 
no, no, that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sophie, lovely to talk to you. Thanks so much for your time and uh, good luck with the series. Hope it goes well. Thanks very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!